Hey everybody, on today's episode we're going to be talking about Lethal Enforcers for the Super Nintendo. So, uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so Lethal Enforcers was a uh, light gun game that came out for the uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, it also was ported to the Genesis, it was an old arcade game. It uh, came out in 1994 for the Super Nintendo. It was made by Konami. Uh, I can still just hear that jingle now. Man, I love that jingle. It brings back memories. So, you needed a gun. A light gun. These ones actually really look like guns. Um, minus the color, obviously. Um, you know, a big step up from uh, the Wii Zapper. Or, sorry, the Nintendo Zapper. And then the Wii Zapper. Zap, zap. So, big step up from the the, uh, the zapper because now you have something that actually looks like a gun. Um, this is interestingly enough, it's one of the last video games that was uh, a light gun game for the Nintendo systems. Um, there wasn't one for the N64. There was not one for the GameCube. Uh, the Wii, I guess you could kind of consider it to be a light gun. Um, didn't use the same technology, but in the Wii Zapper, you had uh, Link's crossbow training, uh, which is a cool little mini game that came with a little zapper. So let's talk about it. What? Why do I have such a uh, uh, love for Lethal Enforcers? So I had the game, uh, got it from my uncle, the same uncle who has continued to help support my gaming passion throughout the years. Uh, he gave it to me. He had had it for his Super Nintendo. He played it, and he's just like, yeah, you know, I think it'd be a cool game to get for you know for you to give it a shot. Um, got it with uh, you know it's the original box here. So I got it. This one came with the uh, the blue light gun. The uh, box on top was the second player, the other justifier, which is the pink one. Uh, cool little fact about these is that the uh, blue controller plugs into the uh, second player two in the uh, in the Super Nintendo, and then to attach the pink controller um, is actually just almost looks like a phone jack. It's something just a little bit smaller than that, um, and that just goes into the bottom of the blue one. You'd plug it in like so, and that way you could have you either dual wield if you're really good, uh, or you have your player two. So. Um, with that, you could also, you didn't have to have the, um, the light gun accessory with it. You could also just use the controller. Super difficult to use the controller. Uh, I've tried it, it's just the aiming is just off. It's just kind of like using a, a slow mouse and trying to, to maneuver around. Uh, definitely not as fun, but if that was the only way you could play it, I mean, uh, it is kind of a, a fun game on its own with the controller, uh, but definitely really recommend getting it for the uh, Super Nintendo with, uh, with a light gun. Um, I just remember playing countless hours uh, with a really good close friend of mine and we would play this thing over you know a weekend over a day whenever we could um, you know trying to you know out shoot uh, or out you know accuracy ex out marksman the other guy uh, and just have fun getting through the entire game you know, there's five missions in total plus there's the uh, the shooting range which was the um, the training the training before your missions um, but just being able to go through there and just playing this game and you know it was cool because it was an arcade game but now you had it at home um, you know again duck hunt was really cool having it for for the nest but I found after a while just yeah it was all right it was you, know, you shoot the birds the dog gets the bird and the dog laughs at you and you don't get the birds and oh the dog is laughing at me again okay Whew. Oh, I'm okay so <laughs> Um, but after that, it was awesome having an arcade game in home. Um, you know, the graphics were more realistic. Um, I've got a clip later on in the video that uh, is the first stage, uh, the first mission, I should say, sorry, um, of the game. More realistic graphics. Um, you had power-ups you can get in the form of a different gun. Um, the standard was your uh, six-shooter, you know, your revolver six-shooter. Um, you know, you could get uh, just a like a nine-millimeter semi-automatic that would hold twelve rounds, or you'd find a magnum, or you would find a uh, machine gun. Um, and any time that you got hit, you received one damage from any one of the uh, enemies, you would lose that. Um, which kind of sucks because you only get like one per level. Uh, except I think in the later levels, four and five, I think you get the possibility of two. Um, so each level has three stages in it. And, you know, each one progressively gets harder. The last one being with the, uh, with the boss battle. 
and it's always good having an upgraded weapon going into the boss battle it just makes it easier uh, to take them down but it's just you know any chance that we got together me and my friend we would that's all we would do is we would play lethal enforcers you know or we would play something else um, and we would go back into it. It was one of those games where it was like it was a super cool co-op um, two-player, you know, it wasn't split screen, so you got to see the same thing, so everything was still enlarged on the screen. And, you know, it was just, it was so much fun. It was, you know, and, and you didn't have to play it, you know, hours on end. You could pick it up, play it for, you know, the first mission, and then, okay, we can go back on to something else. You know, light gun games hold a special place in my heart because, you know, me and my friend had played them, you know, all growing up. You know, it started off with a zapper, then it went to Lethal Enforcers, then it went to House of the Dead, then it went to Time Crisis. And, you know, the, the love and passion is still there. We still pick it up from time to time and still give it a shot. You'll see the CRT right about there. Um, you know, I still have that in here just specifically for light guns and uh, light gun games because the way that the technology and the diode in here connects to the Super Nintendo which connects to the TV so every time you click it would register with the screen the screen would change color for a frame it would register the shot and uh, that's how it would uh, translate to the screen with uh, with any time that you shot with the light gun um, interesting fact uh, that I only learned recently from a friend of mine, uh, Retro Gaming Rock on Instagram, is that uh, you can actually use uh, a modded Wii, and if you're able to mod your Wii and put emulators on there and put light gun games on there, you can actually still, you can use, not necessarily just uh, the zapper, it's cool to hold on to, but just using your Wii mode. Um, you can use... Um, your Wiimote and there's a little uh, crosshair, at least on Lethal Enforcers when I played it, uh, there's a little crosshair so that you can, you know, shoot with, uh, with B and then hold A and B together and that's the shooting off screen. Uh, to reload your weapon. Because all light gun games, you always had to shoot off screen to register the no shot so it would reload. Uh, but it's something really cool. I had, I had no idea that you could do that because, you know, with CRTs over the years now starting to fail, the likelihood of, you know, getting one repaired, you know, it's getting slimmer as, as the years go on and finding ones in good condition, again, getting slimmer as the years go on. So it's a really cool alternative to being able to play some of those light gun games and, and you know, that we don't get to miss out on them and we don't get to kind of lose those memories. Because really, before that, it was if this stopped working or the CRT stopped working, that was it. There was there was no more light gun game. You, you know, you know. Sorry, well, I guess for lethal forces you can use the uh, the controller, but for games like House of the Dead or for games like Time Crisis, um, you know, again you can use a controller, but it's just not the same. You don't get the same feeling, the same nostalgic feeling of going through and, and clicking the trigger as opposed to just going and using the controller. And like I said, it's a lot more difficult using the controller, especially in these kind of games. I mean, you know, maybe not using this in Call of Duty. <laughs> I don't know how well that would work. Uh, we're so used to using controllers for it or a mouse and a keyboard. Uh, but for these light gun games, using a controller just feels uh, feels really, really weird because also you don't have a joystick to play with. Um, so I really, you know, guys, go check out Retro Gaming Rock. He is uh, a wizard when it comes to emulation and questions to emulations and uh, finding out cool tidbits of being able to use your Wii uh, to be able to play uh, light gun games. So uh, thanks to him for those uh, for those tips. So right here I've got a, uh, a clip coming up. Again, it's the uh, first mission, so there's three stages to it. Uh, I'll just go through, kind of just showing you guys some of the gameplay, what it, the game looks like, what it feels like, and uh, we'll take a look. All right, guys, so on today's clip, I'm going to show you uh, Lethal Enforcers for the Super Nintendo. It's actually the uh, second light gun game I ever owned, uh, the first one being Duck Hunt, and this being a giant step up uh, from Duck Hunt on the NES. Uh, here you'll come across uh, robbers and bad guys and uh, all the uh, wonderful Konami music that comes with it. Konami, just something in the 90s, just hearing that music now just brings me right back. So we'll jump into uh, the first mission here, the bank robbery. And uh, we'll take a look. So you'll start off with a six shooter, um, and then you can find upgraded guns throughout the level. Um, you know, if you're playing with two people, you'll find two of them throughout the level. Uh, if you take any damage while having that weapon on you, that upgraded weapon, you, uh, you'll you lose it right away. 
Um, you'll see that uh, you know the screen shutters every time. Um, that's because it, for one frame, goes black and then goes back. Um, that's just how the uh, the light gun communicates to the TV and showing that there's a uh, you know a shot been fired, so to say, uh, so it knows the direction. But so you'll notice that sometimes uh, that it doesn't. Uh, register you'll see that there's a couple times where I've, I've taken a shot and it'll hit you see like just like that so it'll kind of hit it'll look like it hit the uh, the enemy but it didn't uh, I don't have to fire again uh, now some of the uh, the flickers that you also notice is that with the uh, majority of these uh, light gun games is to reload your weapon you have to shoot off screen so by doing that it just it knows that it's not communicating with the TV so it knows to reload um, that's the same for time crisis the same for uh, house of the dead uh, you'll have to shoot off screen for it. It's same thing in a lot of the arcades as well. It's just the way that, again, the, the technology from the gun talks to the TV or the, the monitor display. Um, so interestingly enough, they, they, they pop in civilians from, uh, from time to time in here. Uh, yes, you can shoot the civilians, and yes, you do get penalized for shooting the civilians. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just put in there to kind of keep you on your toes. So here's the uh, second part of the first stage. Um, it's the uh, back alley or behind the bank. Uh, so you can see in there, there's a, there's a gun in there. Uh, another uh, that one I believe is just like a, a hand, a regular handgun, semi-automatic handgun. Uh, so it's not the uh, the six shot anymore. There, it's a twelve shot. Now, me and my best friend would play this game on hours on end, trying to see if we can get through the entire game. And uh, it's just, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to be able to, to plug in and, you know, it's one of those games you don't need to put an excessive amount of hours into to get to the end. It's just, you know, going through it and, you know, maybe having to restart a level and trying it again or, um, you know, using some of those continues that you have. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely really, really cool. It's uh, It brings back a lot of memories going through and playing this game again, um, you know, and how many countless weekends we would play just trying to get through the entire thing or trying to have, you know, the best accuracy or, you know, not uh, trying to hit no civilians or anything like that or take, you know, the least amount of damage. So really, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it's this is what uh, like on games uh, they are. Is it's just a fun arcade you know, shooter, um, you know, you've got your, uh, you know, your few different weapon upgrades and, uh, but they've definitely come a lot, a lot, a lot further along than they have from the past. Um, you know, it's now with the VR, uh, it kind of seems to be like that will be the next step for, uh, you know, for light gun games, so to say. I mean, the technology doesn't work anymore because the, it doesn't work with new TVs. Um, it doesn't have the, the same, talking back feature that the, the, the display would have with the light gun. The uh, last light gun that I know of was uh, Time Crisis for the PlayStation 3. It was when it first came out for the PlayStation 3. And uh, they did end up having another Time Crisis, but that one was with use for the uh, PlayStation Eye and the uh, PlayStation Move. Um, you know, there was the uh, those two navigation sticks, the same that you use in the PlayStation VR. Uh, you could put those into, you know, like that new Wii Zapper kind of looking thing that you could put it up there and use that as uh, as your gun, as your light gun, air quotes, so to say. Um, yeah, so let's take a look here at the uh, the end boss here in the chemical waste service. <laughs> I just I love how they portrayed. Uh, boss battles back in the 90s like he just knew he was evil because he was in the chemical waste service and that's what a that's what a stage looks like you know, there's five of them in total so at the end it grades you on uh, you know your accuracy how many shots how many hits that you did and then uh, it penalizes you by, uh, you'll see just as this counter goes down, for any misses, that being if you shoot any civilians, so any one civilian will drop you down a rank. 
All right, guys. Well, we'll go back to the video. All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the clip there. Uh, special shout out to uh, my buddy Donnie Archer at the Grab Life by the Controller podcast and at Retro Gaming Rock for last week's episode and uh, them talking about fun with light guns. So, which uh, jarred my memory and wanted to do uh, to talk about Lethal Enforcers this week on this week's episode of Tales from the Memory Card. Um, and again, go and check them out. If you're looking for a good gaming podcast, please do yourself a favor and go check out at Grab Life by the Controller. Uh, and uh, go and check out Retro Gaming Rock again for some awesome emulation. Uh, you know, if you got any questions about it, he's, uh, you know, he's the man to answer it for you. And again, using the Wii for light gun games, man. That's that's awesome. So guys, I wanna thank you everybody for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. What was your favorite light gun game growing up? Or you know, what did you play in the arcade? Or did you own any for a home console? And if you guys are looking for me, you can find me on Instagram at the Gaming Power Ups. And you guys can also find me on Twitch at the Gaming Power Ups and Twitter at Gaming Power Ups. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Game on.